Good afternoon, uh, I'm Thomas Sismar from Kishan Domakia's group and uh, first of all I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the chance to present my talk on this meeting and for providing funds for my travel. My talk is about using spatial light regulators for generation and control of multiple and diffracting beams and uh, the project was done in co cooperation with University of St. Andrews and University Palatsky from Czech Republic. <coughs> now, uh, so far most of the achievements in optical trapping was done using focused calcium beams and uh, I don't need to stress the importance of them after the talks we heard in, in the last days. But the revolution in usage and <coughs> and uh, in the ability to serve to fundamental research in, in many disciplines for the possibility to multiply them and control them live online. <coughs> so here are some examples you might probably this one already. So what you're looking at is an example of holographic optical tweezers that you can spontaneously manipulate a number of particles in three dimensions and uh, this video was done by our colleagues from Glasgow from Mars Budget Group. Now the focused Gaussian beams are pretty good but in some situations we can find better beams like um, for example Bessel beam. <coughs> so Bessel beams are a special solution of Maxwell equations such that the lateral profile doesn't spread while they propagate. And these beams are already very well known in the optical therapy community because they were used for many applications and I could, I could spend all my time just listing these applications. So for example, long distance guiding or uh, several interference structures were presented, like for example, standing wave where you can use this beam for long and precise delivery of particles or you can use them to create nice and long polymer fibers or use them in, in biology. Now, these beams can't be obtained in the ideal form because they, just like a plane wave, carries infinity uh, amount of energy. But very well, very, very nice approximation were found, like for example, an axical generated vessel beam. So it's generated by a Gaussian beam passing through an axicron, which is a conical lens. And uh, I'm sorry for the resolution, but you should see a nice, nice rock or needle of light in the center. So this is the uh, intensity profile. So you can see my central core surrounded by several concentric rings. And this is how does the central core intensity look like. Now in biology, there are applications for example for cell sorting that were presented by Kishan Dolaki yesterday. But probably the best applications I can I can show to lift the importance of the cell is in cell transfection. So uh, <coughs> if you use cell uh, Gaussian beam for cell transfection, it's not always the best solution. Cell transfection is, is penetrating a little hole in cell membrane, so the, uh, anything from the outer medium can access the volume of the cell and it can modify the cell functionality. If you use a Gaussian beam, it might be not the best because you need to position very precisely the high intensity spot on the cell membrane, which, uh, as you can see, sometimes the, uh, the response is really weak, sometimes you don't see anything. Now, this is not an issue with the uh, Bessel beams because it's like a long and tiny needle of light. This is an example. Okay. So you can see the nice central core surrounded by several rings. And uh, this is a comparison of transfection efficiency on the axial distance for the Gaussian beam and the Bessel beam. So you can see that the Gaussian beam can work properly 
only a really tiny region, while the vessel beam can work on distances almost 200 micrometers. Now, <clears throat> the step forward would be the possibility to multiplex and control the vessel beams the same way as we can do with calcium beams. So, <clears throat> my talk is about this. So, first I'm going to show some general principles that can be used to achieve this. And I show how it can be applied to the concentrated vessel beam. I'll show how to do it in the lab. And I I present some, some features of the controlling software and then I show some applications. Now, the boring theory first. <clears throat> so, what you are looking at is a telescope or uh, a focal assembly of two lenses. And in the back focal plane of the first lens, we've got an object field. Now, in the front focal plane of the first lens is a spatial spectrum that is related to the field by this equation, which is nothing else but the Fourier transform into dimension and in these frequencies. And very similar relation is between the image field and the spectrum, the Fourier transform with a different frequency because there is a second, second uh, lens. And these two equations lead just to this simple relation between the image field and the object field which has demonstrated very well known properties of the magnifying telescope. So you can see that uh, the image is upside down and scales, scale by the ratio of the focal lengths and as well the amplitude is scaled. <coughs> now, what would happen if we use a modulation of phase in this plane, in the spectral plane, is shown here. So it's really easy to show that using a uh, linear phase in this form leads to lateral shift in the image position. The mask looks like this. So this is related to a, uh, to a shifting property of Fourier transform. Now using a quadratic phase leads to actual axial shift of the image position. And it's really easy to show it just by a material paper. Now, since these two functions are phase only, the modulations are phase only, they can be easily combined, and their product leads to arbitrary 3D position image, which is first step to achieve multiple images. So if you want to achieve multiple images, you just need to do a linear combination of these modulations, and it's exactly what you're looking for. Now, the only problem is that the modulation is not <coughs> phase only anymore, there is the amplitude dependence as well. But the easiest way how to deal with this is to ignore it, which provides some, some uh, unwanted orders, but the efficiency is higher. <coughs> now this theory is, is general and it's working for any kind of field you can imagine. So if you use it for Gaussian beams, you've got the concept of classical holographic optical fielders, and I'll show shortly how it looks like for Bristol beams. So this is just a uh, Gaussian, sorry, uh, axicon generated vessel beam here, used as the object and the telescope and the image. So if I don't apply anything in this plane, we'll obtain exactly the same as here. Now I would like to show in, in the spectral plane what we see is an angular, angular field. So this is, this is a normal spectrum of axicon generated vessel beam and in case we would, we would have an, an ideal vessel beam there will be a delta function in the spectral parallel coordinate. Now if we use a linear phase we can see that the image is shifted laterally and axially like this. Now this is a binary phase mask that is actually the phase if we want to apply to linear Beams. So we can see nicely the unwanted closed borders. But the intensity in total is something like 7% of the total, so it's something we can deal with. Uh, this is not all we can do in case of axicon generated vessel beams. Usually, the quality of axicons is not perfect because their, their tip is usually oblate and it's very hard to produce a very good axicon. So, from the center here, 
we've got something like a spherical wave that propagates and interferes with the special beam we've got, and it's causing some uh, unwanted modulations of the on axis intensity. Now, in this geometry, we've got a unique opportunity to deal with it because we can apply the modulation only on those parts of spectra that creates a nice special beam, which is the unknown ring. And everything that's unwanted, which is in between inside the ring, can be sent to the zero order and blocked after. So here you've got a nice filter, high quality vessel beam. <coughs> the other option we might have is changing the order of the vessel beam, adding a helical face mask. So we can do it individually for each image, and uh, changing the, the uh, order means that we are adding momentum to the light. So we can create any combination we want in this geometry. <coughs> and this is the setup. So it's really straightforward. We've got just the laser, the XC content generates the vessel in here. Then we've got the first line that creates the spectrum on the plate of SLM and the second lens that forms the field in here. Here the, the field can be filtered and the result can be scaled by a second telescope to, uh, <coughs> to the size we need for the experiments. And in here you can send out sample with cells or particles or whatever you want. Uh, this is a demonstration of the software. So as you can see in this part, this is the hologram we are using. So you can see that we are only modulating over an angular uh, space on the chip, which helps to filter the beam and achieve the high quality beam. And as, as at the same time, the big benefit of it this is that we don't need to calculate a function for the whole chip, but just on, on this, this limited space that makes it really faster, much faster than, but for example, we have to deal with normal optical figures. <coughs> so, in, in this part, this is an image from camera. And uh, this is how it works. So wherever you click, the vessel beam appears. And uh, yeah. you can change the axial position of the beam by adding the quadratic phase. You can multiplex the image and choose the properties. <coughs> and uh, yeah, this is again the position. And here we can change the borders of the buildings, adding. And I'm going to do the resulting beams. <coughs> so, once we've got this device, the easiest application is to just lift and guide some particles. So, if you insert a uh, sample of particles, we can just click on them and they disappear on demand. So, once we got this, we can use this for active sorting of objects. So, you get like a mixture of sizes, you can just select one size and uh, just like Syndra, sort them to a different, different flavor. So if you move the sample now, here are the sorting, sorting particles. <coughs> now the question might be, can we use this geometry for 3D tracking of objects? And uh, the answer is yes, we can, but we can't do it using a single vessel beam because the gradient of the intensity is not high enough to create a stable three-dimensional track. But what we can do is we can generate two beams and reflect one backwards on a mirror. So if you put a mirror to the bottom of the sample chamber, we can generate a two counter-propagating beams or a set of counter-propagating beams and position, it, position the resultant track in the minimum form whenever we want. <coughs> so this shows the example. Now in this case, the Z position is attached to the, 
to the wheel of the mouse so we can really you can control the positions of the particle. <coughs> now this is this is used in time sharing geometry and we are switching fastly between these two beams that are created in the trap because we wanted to stop any interference of that. It, it is possible to use extending wave trap on vessel beams to deliver the particles in axial direction, but there are many traps and we don't know where the particle actually is. So this is easier solution. Now we are changing the axial position. So, and uh, as I said at the beginning, we have a change 